Hello. At the end of the month, we're in Manchester. We've got the Manchester Festival of Coaching happening. Like a big music festival, Glastonbury. And maybe the Edinburgh Comedy Festival, the Edinburgh Fringe, where you've got all these different events happening all over the city at different times. Think about that, but for coaching, coach development and coach education. So, some brilliant people. They're Manchester Active and GM Moving and a range of other partners supported by the brilliant gang of Avengers at Sporting People are going to be hosting a big festival. I'll be there on a Thursday. We've got a load of, we've got a load of organisations coming together to talk about what, what we're talking about in the coach, coaching ed, coach education is broken, the system shifts. I'll be hosting some conversations around that. We've got some other organisations who are going to be helping out. That's at Manchester Metropolitan University on the 27th. But if you want to come along to any of the events and there's loads going on and some brilliant names one, one of the ones i'm really looking forward to is hearing phoebe Schechter, who you may not have heard of but she's a female american football coach who is does a lot of pundits work on sky when the american football's on sky she's amazing i really like her and i'm really looking forward to listening to her story because obviously it's really she's obviously been through some really interesting challenges in the super male dominated sport but that's just one of a number of people who are doing really interesting things get there to go search up manchester coaching festival or manchester festival of coaching and you'll come to a page and it'll be able to sign up there and uh, yeah i'd love to see you okie doke bye good morning coach education is broken series episode three this one is entitled from qualifications to quality assured delivery so by the way, Flo is here. Some people, a lot of people ask me about Flo, like where is Flo? They don't even think Flo exists, and she's real, but she is. Oh, very real. Just generally speaking, quite a contented little companion trotting along. Anyway, back to the thing. Okay, so what are we trying to do here with this system shift? So, at, let tell you a little story. So obviously in a previous episode, we talked about who cannot have her expertise or confidence recognised because she hasn't been on a course. And we obviously need to change that paradigm. So let's just talk about me. So I, like a lot of people, obtained some coaching qualifications when I was at university because I was doing a sports science degree and part of that was we had we had a course or a, a module on pedagogy and we during that module on pedagogy we were able to do some some coaching qualifications that were discounted quite a few i did squash and I did hockey uh, i did one in athletics a pace setter course lots of those they were quite a uk kind of use for my career going forward but I haven't really used them very much ever since, certainly not squash. But obviously hockey meant that I went on a career path or a journey to improve myself. So I got my level one, then very quickly got my level two and then was able to attend the level three. So by the age of around about 25, 26, I was level three qualified. I was doing loads of coaching, started coaching some representative stuff doing pathway work county stuff fully on that kind of that journey that pathway but i got that level three 25 years ago yes that's right i know you can probably tell because i but because of the years have been hard 25 years ago i got that qualification now every year my governing body asks me do I want to be part of their membership and get insurance and all of those sorts of things which I dutifully do but I at no point have I been asked or required to verify my level of ability competence I so as far as the organization knows they have no idea about whether I'm out there actively causing harm to participants, unwittingly or otherwise. They have no idea what my level is. They have no idea what my level of activity is. Am I lapsed? Am I continuing to put? Just because I pay my insurance doesn't necessarily mean I'm coaching that much. I mean, you assume I would be, but 
not necessarily the case. Have I maintained my have I maintained my level of knowledge to be able to understand as the game progresses and new approaches emerge? Have I progressed that? I, I became a coach educator, coach developer. I've done all that sort of stuff. And now I like to think that obviously a lot of those things have happened because I've been pretty committed to my own personal development. 400 odd hours of audio and conversations about coaching have definitely been part of me growing my knowledge base. Ongoing writing and publish, publishing things and attending conferences and delivering workshops as well as attending them and writing them and all those sorts of things. I would like to think that I was I to be able to have some form of expertise verification or professional recognition that I would be recognised as having a an appropriate level, whatever that might be. Either I've maintained my so-called level three competence or I've surpassed it and moved on to being, I've improved in some way. But instead of that, basically I'm as good as somebody who did their course last year. We in, as far as the kind of the world knows, the world of my sport, we've got the same. Now, that doesn't strike me as being very useful at all to anyone. It's not very useful to the system builder because you don't know what your workforce looks like and what their capabilities are. So from the perspective of how you would deploy them, i.e. let's say you want to recruit them to specific roles, whether that's in the talent pathway or you've got a big participation program that you want to run, maybe with specialist audiences, people who are older or people who are with disabilities or whatever it might be. You don't know anything about your workforce beyond the fact that they obtained, they attended a course at one time and were given some form of certification. So that's not helpful. It's not helpful as well to anybody looking to participate. If you're trying to, if you're an individual, like a parent, for example, you want to take your kids along to a session and you want to know a little bit about what that person, who that person is and what they're able to do and what their kind of background is, all you've got is a certificate that was done whenever and whatever that means, if indeed that exists. And then the other thing as well is that it's not particularly good for a deployer or an employer. So in my role as a club chair, if I'm looking from out there, looking for people to perform certain roles, beyond the fact that it's a compliance measure from an insurance perspective, realistically, I know that maybe whatever certification they may have obtained, maybe doesn't have a great deal of, doesn't give me a great deal of information about that individual's capability. So obviously from a recruitment perspective, we would need to find that. Likewise, if like a school, for example, wants to bring a coach into the school to work with some young people, like how do they know that person has an appropriate level of training and education to work with young people. They don't, just, just an arbitrary benchmark of a qualification. A moment in time that an individual had, was deemed to have been competent at a moment in time. That's all a qualification is, all it is. But we assume, and this is everywhere, it's not just in sport, it's in lots of parts of society, we assume that because somebody did some form of education and training at some point in their lives that they were deemed competent, that competence will stay with them forever. So we need to shift from qualified once, competent forever, to professional recognition, ongoing professional recognition. Now I use this word professional not to denote somebody who is paid, I use the word professional to say that an individual who has expertise and that expertise carries a degree of responsibility means that that individual has a sort of professional responsibility. And this is particularly important if coaching is to become a profession or a professionally regulated vocation, which a lot of coaches say they want. And if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that there's an accountability framework which means that an individual should ensure that they subject themselves to a regular verification of their competence and expertise in order to be able to demonstrate that. This happens in every other profession. The professional 
takes it upon themselves to verify their professional credibility or their professional capabilities. This is what we would strive for in a professionally regulated vocation or a genuine profession. Now, if we want to shift in that direction, that means that the education system has to, which is why we go back to changing the paradigm, the education system has to stop only being focused on the demonstration of competence in a moment in time, because all that does is tick that box, right? And we need to shift towards the idea of individuals uh, demonstrating their professional expertise on a continued basis. Now, the requirement would be not necessarily like, what we're not wanting to do is to put additional burdens on people. So it's perfectly okay for an individual to almost just like maintain. They don't have to be continuously developing their capabilities and continuously going on a million courses. And by the way, this doesn't necessarily require individuals to go on courses, right? Because anything but courses, to quote Harold Yarkey, but we're not just, not, courses have their place, right? But they, it's not, you have to do a course and you have to do our course and you have to have X number of CPD points. That's not what this is about. This is about an individual being able to communicate with some form of professional indemnification organization. So for example, I've got my insurance, insured to do what? So from the insurance industry are out there going, hang on a second, we haven't realized that actually we're carrying quite a bit of risk because we're indemnifying these individuals. And we don't know what they're actually, whether they're still competent or not, because they've never gone through any verification process. When speaking to insurers within the sports industry, they're pretty aghast at that. And as a result of that, a lot of insurers are really asking the question about whether sport is something that can be insured. And one insurer said to me, directly, we're not 100% sure whether sport's going to be insurable going forward, the world of industry coaching. So this is absolutely necessary, essential for the future of the coaching industry. If we move towards this idea, then what we can do is we can identify individuals who are committed to maintaining their level of proficiency and in so doing those individuals are the ones that we're, the ones that we can have a degree of confidence not it's not foolproof but a higher degree of confidence that those individuals are the kind of person that you could have you could you could feel as if you would be doing the right thing by engaging them you could have a degree more trust because in some cases the trust has been eroded by virtue of the fact of various different scandals and cases that have happened over the years. We, so our shift, to recap, is to move away from courses and certification at the end of the course through some form of assessment towards long-term, elongated, over a period of time, individuals demonstrating their professional capability. Now, I'm going to take some work and take some challenge and the next few system shifts we'll talk about that and there may be a little bonus one that we throw in talking about the use of technology or its misuse but stay tuned for that in the meantime have a great week and i'll post episode two sorry episode four yes i'm moving track episode four in a week's time